In Santa Cruz, the Loma Prieta earthquake looked like this. The 1995 Kobe, Japan earthquake looked like this. And a quake in the laboratory might look like this. Well, this may not look like an earthquake, but this is the Earth's earthquake machine. The goal of any science model is to try to simulate what happens in the real world. But how can you simply simulate the motion of the Earth's plates, tension in the Earth's crust? And how can that show you that quakes are so unpredictable? The answer came to Dr. Ross Stein like a ton of bricks. What have you got here? I've got the earthquake machine that comes right out of the Earth. Ross is able to at least approximate the timing of quakes like this one that hit Northridge more than a decade ago. Using this simple model. Oh, that's beautiful. He does it with sandpaper and bricks. I've stripped it down to the bare essentials. So that's all you need to see. And what are those essentials? First, there's the crank. And that represents the motion of the plate interior. In other words, all those 12 plates are moving around at a steady rate, moving at about the short width of a credit card a year. So we have a wire, which is a non-stretch wire, and that's connected to a bungee cord. And they're connected to the bricks, and that's the mass that's going to be moved in an earthquake. And they're sitting on Home Depot sandpaper, just plain old sandpaper, non-skid, that creates the friction in the system. So plate motion, bungee cords, sandpaper, bricks. And that's all we need. OK. All right, so now I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to start cranking at a steady rate. It's a slow, steady motion. And somehow, despite the fact that this motion is continuous, we get stick slip at the fault. We get long periods where nothing happens, punctuated by periods of earthquakes. Believe it or not, the key to why you can't predict this is about to be revealed by this simple experiment. One more time. Watch. The wire is pulling in, and so the stress is building up on our bungee cord. And eventually, the stress overcomes the frictional resistance at the fault. And when that happens, we're going to have an earthquake. And I got an earthquake. And we're going to have to wait a number of additional cranks until we have the next earthquake. Second earthquake. Third earthquake. Okay, so we had four earthquakes in this experiment, right? Was I cranking at a steady rate? Yeah. Okay, so I wasn't doing anything to force an earthquake or delay an earthquake. All right. Were all the earthquakes the same size? No. No, that second one was much bigger, right? right. Yeah. And the second one was followed by a longer period of time in the next one. So even though I cranked at a steady rate, I've got one piece of bungee cord here, I've got the same bricks, the same sandpaper, I'm not getting earthquakes of equal size out of this experiment. And I'm not getting equal weights between earthquakes, right? Right. That's very bad news. Because if I can't get regular periodic behavior out of this, we're never going to get it in the Earth. The Earth is going to be much more complicated than this. Mm -hmm.